There were two new topics in this lecture, molar specific heat and work done by an expanding gas. We saw how to calculate the molar specific heat capacity of a gas by finding the number of active modes per molecule, like we saw in the previous lecture, and then multiplying by the gas constant divided by two. The same formula works for monatomic solids since they have three vibrational kinetic energy modes and three vibrational potential energy modes. The same idea of counting the modes works for more complicated solids and liquids, but it is much more difficult, so we will not get into it in Physics 7. The second main topic was thinking about the work done by an expanding gas. We know that the total internal energy is given by adding the thermal energy and the bond energy. If we consider the case that there is no phase or chemical change, then the internal energy is just given by the thermal energy. We also know that the change in internal energy is equal to the heat and work energy transferred to the system. If we further restrict ourselves to cases where no heat is transferred, then the change in thermal energy is just given by the amount of work energy transferred. You probably know that compressing a gas always raises the temperature if no heat is transferred. So that tells us that the work energy is positive. Or in other words, the work energy needed to compress the gas is changed into thermal energy. If a gas expands with no heat transfer, then the temperature of the gas falls. So the work energy transferred is negative. In other words, the gas did work on something outside the system. We will be using this idea of the work done by an expanding gas to study situations where both heat and work are transferred at the same time. For example, let's look at the case of an expanding gas. If the process is happening slowly enough that at every moment the gas is near equilibrium, then we can better understand what is going on by drawing a graph of the pressure versus volume during the expansion. When we expand the gas by adjusting the force on the piston and don't allow any heat transfer, then we know the temperature falls and we get a graph like this. We could add some heat as the gas is expanding, and if we are careful, we could adjust the heat and pressure so that the gas stays at a constant temperature. Then the ideal gas law tells us that the pressure curve goes like 1 over the volume. We can also expand the gas while keeping the pressure constant by simply having a weight on top of the piston. Then we have to add even more heat in order to get the same expansion in volume. The ideal gas law confirms that in this case the final temperature is four times larger than the initial temperature since the volume expanded by a factor of four while the pressure was constant.